Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and I'm a Community Activation and Learning Officer with Melton City Council. I'd normally be based at Taylor's Hill Youth and Community Centre, but today I'm coming to you from my home kitchen. And I'm super excited to be sharing with you one of my favourite recipes for making, homemade Play-Doh. I've cooked a lot of Play-Doh over the years and I can honestly say that the method that I'm going to be showing you today is one of the most simple, straightforward, foolproof ways to make Play-Doh at home. The trick to it is we use the slow cooker to cook the Play-Doh. Using the slow cooker not only gives us a really great, soft, smooth Play-Doh consistency, it makes the method of cooking Play-Doh really child friendly. And by that I mean we're not going to be using a stovetop to mix our ingredients, so there's no open flame. So it's really safe to have the kids involved in that cooking process with us. So our Play-Doh that we're making today is made using just seven ingredients. All of the ingredients are non-toxic and they are common pantry items. So you should hopefully have most of the ingredients at home already. The one ingredient that I generally don't have as a staple item in my pantry is the cream of tartar. So that might be an issue for you as well. Um, I would recommend that you do use the cream of tartar though, don't skip it, um, because the cream of tartar gives our Play-Doh that really nice, soft, stretchy feeling, and it also acts as a preservative. So it's going to make our Play-Doh last a lot longer. So what we have here is all the ingredients that we need for our slow cooker Play-Doh recipe. I've measured them all out in advance, and what we have is two cups of plain flour, half a cup of salt, three tablespoons of cream of tartar, three tablespoons of corn flour, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and two cups of warm water. We also have our food coloring, which we don't need just yet, but we will need later on when our dough is cooked. And I myself like to add half a teaspoon of almond extract into my Play-Doh recipe. I think it makes the Play-Doh smell amazing, but this is completely optional as to whether or not you'd like to add it. So the method for making the dough is really easy. Firstly, we start off with all of our dry ingredients. We're gonna pop all of those dry ingredients straight into the slow cooker bowl. There's no need to mix them in a separate mixing bowl and transfer them across. Just whack them straight in the slow cooker bowl and it's going to save with cleanup at the end as well. Once all the dry ingredients are in, we can add our wet ingredients to the slow cooker bowl. Make sure you don't add any food colouring at this point in time. We're going to do that at the end once the dough is cooked. Once we've got all of our dry and wet ingredients into the bowl, we're just going to grab a wooden spoon and we're going to stir all of the ingredients until they're well combined. It's so straightforward, you can definitely get the kids involved in this part of the process and I'm sure they'll have a lot of fun doing so as well. So we've done a great job of mixing all the ingredients and they're all really well combined in the bowl. So all we need to do now is cover it with the lid and turn it on to high. That's right. And we leave it cook for one hour. It really is as simple as mix, cover and go. And that's why I love this recipe. So we'll see you back in an hour. So an hour is now passed and it's time for us to check how our Play-Doh is going. So the first step is to obviously take off our lid from our slow cooker. And we're going to grab a wooden spoon or, you know, a ladle or anything like that. And we're going to give it a really good stir. I'd suggest that this part of the um, process is done by an adult because the slow cooker pot is going to be pretty warm to touch. So I'm just going to pop on a oven mitt myself just so I can get a good grip of that bowl on the side and just start mixing it around. 
So all we're trying to do is just um, scrape down the sides of the bowl just to make sure we're not leaving any of the Play-Doh stuck behind in the slow cooker. And we're just starting to form a little bit of a ball with our Play-Doh as well. It is gonna feel pretty sticky in the pot at this stage. Don't be concerned about that. You haven't done anything wrong. That's what it's meant to be like. Um, so don't be worried if you're, you're mixing and you're thinking, oh, these, this is really sticky. That's perfectly fine. That's why we actually need the dough once we take it out of the pot, just to help um, remove that stickiness from the dough itself. So I'm just continuing to work the dough a little bit in the pot first before I tip it out onto my chopping board. I do recommend that you tip the dough onto a chopping board to start with and not straight onto your bench top because it is going to be quite hot and you don't want to do any damage to your bench top surface. So I've been mixing this for not long now, maybe 30 seconds, and I'm happy to take this out of the pot now. So all you need to do is just scoop the dough out of the pot. I recommend grabbing another spoon just to take it off your main spoon because it is going to be a bit hot on your fingers. Just go back and get what's left in here. Okay, so you can see from my mixture here, it does look quite sticky and that's okay. So if that's how yours looks, that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem there. I do recommend leaving the dough to sit for a good 10 minutes before you start kneading it because it is going to be really warm for you to touch. If you are comfortable with touching it now, if you can, just give it a super quick knead just at this point of time, just to start forming the ball shape. So that way it's not all really lumpy when you go to start kneading it. All right, so once your dough is cooled to a temperature that you feel comfortable touching it, um, we do need to start kneading it. I'd recommend not leaving your dough until it's cold because you're not gonna be able to knead it properly. You do still want it to be slightly warm to the touch. And you just knead your dough like you would knead any other type of dough. Bread dough, pizza dough, any type of dough. Um, just knead it through with your hands um, and the palm of your hands working through um, to make a really nice, soft, smooth consistency. Um, it will feel a little bit sticky to touch, but the more um, you knead it, the better that consistency is going to get. Um, the, the, the amount of kneading really does just depend from batch to batch, but generally it's only a few minutes that you need to knead it until you've got the nice soft smooth consistency and that stickiness is gone. You don't want any of the stickiness, um, stickiness to be there um, because obviously then it's going to get stuck on little hands and stuck all over um, everything else that the Play-Doh goes on. So just continue to knead it until that stickiness is gone and you have a nice, soft, smooth consistency. I've been kneading my dough for a few minutes now and I'm really happy with its consistency. So I'm going to stop kneading and move on to the next stage of the process, which is breaking the dough into batches. So we break the dough into the batches because it means that we can add different colours and have different colour Play-Doh. With this amount of dough, I recommend four batches, but of course you can make your batches smaller or larger, depending on what you're wanting to do with your Play-Doh. So breaking it into the batches is really easy. You pretty much just separate your dough into four equal amounts. Once you're happy with the amount that you have in each batch, then you can get your food coloring out and we can get uh, coloring our dough. All right, so we're up to the part where we're going to add the coloring to our dough. I like to wear disposable gloves when I'm starting off the coloring process um, because the food coloring can stain your hands a bit just as you're first working it through the dough. Once the coloring's in the dough, you can continue to knead it without the gloves on. So um, don't worry about that. Now, the food coloring part is really simple. You can use any normal food coloring or you can also use food gel, whatever you have at home. Feel free to mix your colors. Um, and obviously 
The more drops you add, the deeper the colour that's going to be, the less drops, the lighter the colour. I always start off with just a few drops because the colour can intensify quite quickly. It's easier to add um, as opposed to trying to take away colour once it's in. So we're going to just start off with making some yellow dough. That's what Jack has selected for today. So I've just added a few drops. And as you can see, I'm actually just kneading that colour through the dough just to try and mix the colour through. It's a really simple process. You can see that the colour is starting to take on that dough. It is fairly light, so I'm going to add a few more drops to that as we would like our yellow to be a bit brighter, wouldn't we? Yes. So just going to get more of that colour absorbed into the dough. And once it's absorbed into the dough, I'm going to hand over to Jack to keep mixing for me. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to pop it on Jack's board and he can mi keep mixing that one for me. And we'll start on our next colour. The thing that I really love about Play-Doh is that it can provide hours of fun and entertainment and it's really inexpensive and as you can see, simple to make at home. The other great thing about Play-Doh is that it really encourages creative play with children. Not only can you use your traditional Play-Doh shapes um, and rolling pin, but you can also have a look in your art and craft box at home to see what other things that you can create with your Play-Doh. We've had a little bit of fun this afternoon and we've got our little Play-Doh alien with his moustache, our Play-Doh hedgehog, and our snake who has been to the doctors and has had a bandage put on. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to make some Play-Doh at home using your slow cooker. If you give it a go, then definitely let us know how you find the recipe by providing some feedback in our comments section. If you're looking for other things that you can do at home, then make sure you check out our Mountain Learning YouTube channel. There's a range of videos that you can access 24 seven on a variety of topics that I'm sure you're going to love.